and welcome to the 2019 GR Supra GT Cup. My name is Tom Brooks. Alongside me is Chaz Draycott. We are here to guide you through the action for the North America region race today. So let's get straight into it, shall we? And look at the point standings after 12 rounds of the Cup then. You can see that Carl Lamb sits at the top of the order. Then is Gator Down, who is about a 400 point adrift there in second position. Very close though, Chaz, between Turismo Zefson uh, and I'm Ibrahim in third and fourth. Yeah, only four points separating them. I think that's the closest we've seen out of all the regions of all the series that we've had so far. Um, really, really good to see that these guys could change so much in just one decent result today. Uh, you never know, though, on the other side of the fence, a bad result could really drop someone down the order because obviously this is done on averages in, at the end of the day. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see what this race brings. Yeah, absolutely right. You can see on the right-hand side of your screen there from uh, 11th down to uh, 16th, just 800 points separating those drivers. You might think, well, 800 points sounds like quite a big margin, but uh, within these races and the number of points that you can gain, uh, it is not. So anything could be set to change here later on this afternoon. Let's take a closer look, shall we, at the circuit. The drivers are going to be uh, competing on then here today for round 13 of the GR Super GT Cup. And it is the Nürburgring 24-hour track. This, of course, was where we had our World Tour 2 venue uh, back in June. 25.3 kilometers of absolute tarmac perfection. The 24-hour layout as well incorporates most of the Grand Prix layout. You can see the corners on your screen at the moment, uh, some of which need no introduction in any way, shape or form. And uh, it is a very unique challenge, this, on the uh, calendar here, Chaz. And uh, just look at this, the elevation. Yeah, 300 metres is a massive change. Uh, you really do feel it in cars like this as well. Um, there's going to be sections where the slipstream is very important because having the uh, the power that they've got to, you know, get up some of these steep hills, you really want to get every little bit of help you can. And because of how long the circuit is, I mean, 89 corners, there's just... The numbers behind the notch life are just incredible. And when you chuck the GP loop onto it as well, it just adds to the fun. Yeah, it's mega. You can see two penalty zones there on your screen at the moment where the red lines are just on towards the Dottinger Hur and then one uh, also on the GP layout just before the uh, Dunlop curve there as well. So uh, just keep an eye out for that uh, because uh, if any drivers do exceed track limits or are deemed to have done some unsportsmanlike conduct, that is where they will have to serve those penalties. A closer look at the uh, race details then will reveal that uh, we're going to have a three-lapper around this Nürburgring 24-hour circuit. Uh, they had a 14-minute qualifying test in our drivers from North America to decide how the grid lines up, but four times fuel consumption, 13 times tyre wear, and the tyre strategy is the interesting point here because they're all starting on sports hard compounds of tyres, and you might think, well, okay, but that's that's not too much of an issue. Three laps around uh, the Nurburgring. However, strategy-wise, it makes it a very unique challenge because uh, it's only a two-lap duration that the tyres are able to hold on to. So it's uh, going to be exciting here to see how these drivers will fare. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see whether anyone stays out for the duration um, and tries to, you know, drag them out. You can see there just two laps of the three. Um, you know, you would think, like you say, one lap, oh, that'd be all right. But really, when it's a track as long as the Nodge Life, it's going to be an absolute nightmare on horrible tyres. It's focusing at the best of times. So, yeah, I'm uh, I'm thinking that maybe staying out might be the option because of how difficult it is to overtake. Yeah, you lose about 20 seconds or so in the pit lane here, uh, making it one of those pit stops. So just keep an eye out for that as well. Uh, because drivers, of course, if they do decide to pit, they'll have fresher rubber at the end of the, of the race. But if somebody in front of them does not pit, uh, they will, of course, have a bit more advantage on track position. So it's kind of apples and oranges, swings and roundabouts, really. We'll see what happens. Nobody really knows at the moment. Uh, but we'll get into it and find out, shall we? Let's get ready to get this race underway. Onto the grid then, Carl Lamb qualified at pole position, NZ there in second position, then Slicey Cyrus and Card Span in third and fourth position here there as well. Everybody in relative sort of uh, the order that we were expecting in terms of where they line up on the grid. Now here is Carl Lamb, very distinctive livery on his Toyota GR Supra, as you can see heading down towards that first corner, quite uh, Japanese inspired for this machine. You can see the NZ there with another distinctive Japanese S livery on his car. Over the line we go though to start the Supra race for the North America region for round 13 of the GR Supra GT Cup and down towards the first corner Carl Lamb has got the advantage here but is anybody in the slipstream going to be able to take profit and try and think about a lunge down towards the first turn? Well it's kind of uh, a bit difficult to do so at this stage because they're all quite spread out coming down towards this uh, first corner and uh, often you can put yourself at more of a disadvantage than you could gain from it in these opening stages. Yeah, Slighty Cyrus there tried to take a wide line to get a late apex into turn one, hopefully get some sort of cutback, but it's really not worked there. Cardspan 3 is right behind now as well. 
So he's put the pressure on himself. NZ and Carla might have an opportunity to break away because of that. I know it may seem early on to say that, but really, from other races that we've seen in other regions, if you do make some sort of drastic moves around this Grand Prix loop for the first time, it can really hinder your entire race. Uh, we've seen a couple of guys start to run away from the beginning, and I think Carl and Enzet are going to do that now. You can see the two silver, very distinctive Japanese cars, as Tom highlighted, running away. Sliding a lot, though, into the hairpin, quite a bit of understeer, so these guys need to get those tyres up to temperature. Um, interesting to note as well, though, Tom, no weaving across the line in this one. We've seen it in other regions where people are trying to break the toe or get heat in, but these guys just got straight on with it. Yeah, we have seen that quite a lot, as you were saying there, Chaz, and drivers just trying to do anything they can, really, to try and keep an advantage over the driver who is attempting to attack from behind. Uh, but nothing of the like here in this North America region, which I think is good to see, personally, because I'm not sure I agree with that weaving. You know, I understand if you're trying to get heat into your tyres, the weaving, but when you're trying to defend a position, you know, I think you should be making uh, one move and then uh, keeping that line under braking, as uh, we do see in uh, other disciplines of motorsport. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But like you say, these guys want to get every tiny advantage they can. Um, I mean, we've had races decided by thousands, so you never know what uh, what could change it over the course of the race. There is Slicey Cyrus then in third place. Carter Fan just behind in fourth. Looks like he hasn't made the uh, made the move at the moment. So it looks like Slicey Cyrus may be actually reeling the front two guys back in. I say that, and he goes into the wall. So there's the commentator's curse in its proudest form. Mr. MCA just behind in fifth place. Turismo Cooper's in there as well. Kooky Burb. Fantastic username, I must say. <laughs> in seventh place with R1600 Turbo in eighth. So onto the Nordschleife then for the first time. And yeah, this is where it's getting narrow and, uh, and difficult for these guys. This is the thing, isn't it? And you can see the top two there of Carl and NZ almost putting a little bit of an advantage. Slicey Cyrus there in third position, not too far adrift. He's kind of a bit all on his own here, really, which I want to say would be a bad thing for him normally, but in this infield section, it could kind of be a bit of a beneficiary for him because he's not got too many drivers attacking from behind, so he can just run his own lines here, run his own race. The dirty air, uh, as we've seen with uh, other cars on GT Sport, is not so prominent within these uh, Toyota GR Supra, so you can follow the other drivers in front relatively closely there as well and not have to worry about uh, scrubbing off your tyres and understeering through um, the corners either. So. It's an interesting one, isn't it? But uh, Slighty Cyrus there has had a few good corners and he's now closing up onto the back of NZ as he tries to attempt to find his way past into P2 here. Yeah, he's, um, he's probably just going to be following along, just seeing where these guys are strong and where they're not quite as quick. And just try and save the tyres mainly. I mean, it may only be a three-lap race, but like we were saying at the top of the broadcast, it's such a long lap that if you don't pit, then that last lap is going to be one of the longest laps of your life. So you really just need to sort of manage it, follow the car in front maybe for the first lap and just see where you could gain an advantage. Uh, Carl Lamb is probably going to be the one here that's going to be killing the tyres the most because he's got no reference point in front of him. He's just got to go for it. There's no other option, is there? No, exactly that. And uh, well, not having that reference point can be a very big disadvantage in terms of uh, how you drive the circuit at the moment. He's pushing very hard indeed. He was fastest in the first sector of this lap. NZ was fastest and he came back in the uh, second sector as well. And then those two have uh, been relatively close actually in terms of the sectors which have followed through sector four, sector five. Uh, over the uh, 16 sectors that do make up this lap here at the Nordschleife. Here, though, is Carl Lamb. You can see he had a three-tenths of a second advantage over the last gap. There is Slighty Cyrus, though, who has uh, closed that gap now down uh, to, of course, uh, NZ in front. And also Cards fan, not too far away either. But he's got a bit of company in the form of Mr. MCA, who we haven't mentioned so far in this race. But just sitting there quietly in fifth position, ready to pounce and ready to try and take advantage if anything goes wrong between these drivers in front. Yeah, they've just got to uh, just got to keep their heads on. I think that's the thing. You can you can easily overdrive the car around the Norge life. Um, these guys will have put so many laps in round here. They'll know every single corner. I mean, they're, they're professionals at what they do. Um, a lot of people I know still don't know the Norge life. You could you could take them around it, and they won't know what corner's coming up next. But they can be forgiven for that with 89 corners on this layout. Um, just going. To look, I thought Carson was going a bit hot in there actually. Then I sort of held my breath a second, but he seems to have uh, got it all collected. But nice even spread at the moment between these guys. Um, two seconds, seemingly the biggest gap with inside the top ten, and then Calm a bit further down, uh, 4.4 seconds drift from the guy in front. So. Yeah, it's, um, it's quite tame as it stands at the moment, I'd say. Yeah, a bit more spread out than we have seen in other regions so far. Uh, however, strategy can really bring that back into play, can't it? Especially on that final lap. Drivers uh, may decide to pit, other drivers may decide to go on to the end of this race. And then, of course, as we said earlier on, you have got that gap to try and make up the advantage that you have fresher rubber. The disadvantage is that you only have one lap to try and do it. 
Uh, 25.3 kilometres sounds like a lot of time, but given it's so narrow uh, on this Nordschleife circuit, it can be a lot more of an uphill task than you might be thinking. Here, though, is NZ, meanwhile, in second position. Just beginning to put that pressure onto Carl Lamb here now as well. Still a three-tenths of a second, the gap between those two drivers. Not able to try and find his way through as things stand. And I don't think he's going to want to here either, Chaz, as well. I think uh, that you run a risk, don't you, if you go past too soon and you're not able to extend that advantage. You can just be killing your tyres, taking too much life out of it. And that can really, really compromise you, depending on your strategy call as to whether you pit or not. Yeah, definitely. And one of the sort of uh, one of the tactics that we've seen from a lot of the drivers in these races is, of course, you've got the dotting of her. You've got the massive straight really big slipstreaming opportunity if you play your cards right in the last few sectors you can just make sure that you've got enough of a slingshot to get past there um, we've seen races decided because of that in other regions as well um, so you know in NZ's position right now you don't want to be killing the tyres too much I mean Carl Lamb is setting some really good pace he looks like he's on rails to be honest it's not like he's uh, all over the place and losing control but um, it's just, you know, in your head, it's going to be very difficult to manage what you're doing right now. I mean, Slicey Cyrus and, uh, and Cards fan have clung on to the back of these two leaders as well. Carl, I'm edging out a bit of a gap there, actually, out of the carousel. He's got a really good run. Eight tenths, almost eight tenths of a second now, the, uh, the race lead to him. But, you know, come along straight. You know, we know there is one, let's face it. <laughs> There's, uh, that's going to get completely diminished again. So it's, it's just a battle of, uh, of mindset, I think, around here. You've just got to keep your head on. Certainly seems to be the way, doesn't it? There, Carham, Carl Lamb, rather, I should say, keeping his head. I'm going for another type of meet there, but <laughs> <laughs> he's not doing a bad job out in front of this race. Eight-tenths of a second, the advantage that he has over NZ in second place. And NZ looks almost a little bit on the back foot in the latter half of this lap now. Slighty Cyrus seems to have just sorted himself out, just seems to have gathered himself up a little bit over the last half a lap or so, uh, and is really closing that gap down to NZ, now down to four-tenths of a second. But we know that that accordion effect can take place. You know, that gap can be increased out, and then a few quarters later it can shrink down. A few quarters later it can increase out. You know, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a very common occurrence, I should say, in these GR Supra machines. Yeah, definitely. Um, and like you were saying before, the, the dirty air isn't a massive factor with these things like we've seen in other series. So you can follow very closely around here, and that's what these guys want to do on this circuit. Um, Mr. MCA, though, we're looking at right now in sixth place. Chasing down Turismo Cooper, bit of daylight. Well, not much daylight, it's not very bright. Between him and Kooky Burb as well behind. So he's not got the most difficult job in the world right now of, you know, defending too hard or trying to attack too hard. Just going to manage to tie his DNA spec Miata. But further down, he's got a great battle in front of him. That's DCTR Burdock really putting the pressure on Q-Tip. And DCTR Burdock was actually fastest in the fourth and fifth sector over the course of this lap. So clearly he's got a good amount of pace behind him and he's looking very comfortable indeed. He's a little bit further down the order. Are we going to see a repeat of what happened in the European region where we see a driver further from down the order fighting at the front by the end of this race thanks to their strategy call? Through the right hand we go. Then we're going to flick it left once more. DCTR Burdock, he needs to try and get himself ahead of Q-Tip before the end end of this uh, lap really he's pulling alongside him now he's up into ninth position through into that second carousel we go nicely done there from DCTR Burdock now the good advantage for him is that he's got clear track in front of him coming on to uh, lap two and that will be a very very welcome sight indeed yeah definitely and DNA spec me out is trying to get the move done as well doesn't quite do it but he was opportune in trying to get it done tried to stick his nose down the inside didn't quite get there now on to the dotting of her. This is where he's going to have the run. As we look back at the leaders then, NZ, six tenths of a second back. He's just gone underneath that, but I don't know if it's going to be enough here, Tom, to uh, to get through. No, I don't think it is on this uh, particular occasion there for NZ. Maybe he's just backed out of the throttle a little bit here as well. The second phase of the straight, he looks very close, doesn't he, actually? And it looks like he could potentially launch a bit of a move, but the problem is if you get yourself ahead, it can often be a bit more of a disadvantage because, as, as we said earlier on, you're taking life out of your tyres, etc., etc., and it can really, really cause some uh, problems for you in the closing stages of this race. Now, is anybody going to piss at the end of lap one? It's very unlikely they're going to do so. And indeed, the top four opt against it then. So they're going to go to the end of lap two, presumably, before they do pit, if they pit at all, of course, here as well. Now Slighty Cyrus is really putting that pressure onto NZ, and he's in this really unfortunate position here, Chaz, of trying to attack, but also defend at the same time. And, and just how difficult is it to be in that position? 
you've you've really got to overthink every little move that you're doing. I mean, if you try and get a cutback on somebody going into a corner, or if you're really following closely, you're thinking if you're breaking early, is the car behind you going to be thinking that you're going to break early as well? Are they taking that into consideration? Are they just going to go for an attack and think, oh, well, if you're not going to go past him, I'm going to do a better job. You know, there's so many conflicting different mindsets when you're in a close battle like this that sometimes you can overthink it, overdrive the car and you know, it's it's even easier to make a mistake then because you, you're just sort of battling yourself in your own head eventually. So these guys just need to remain focused on the car in front and the task at hand. But when well, we've all been in similar situations, it's never that easy, is it? No, it certainly is not through the uh, hairpin bend. We go then on the Grand Prix layout of this uh, circuit through the Schumacher S, which follows. Entered there in second position, then... This is what we're used to seeing here, really, Chaz, as well. The field beginning to spread out. Actually quite pronounced in terms of the uh, spread as well, especially if you look back to uh, the likes of Turismo Cooper there in fifth. Uh, Mr. MCA in sixth position. He's a further two seconds down of him. Uh, then five seconds all the way back to Turbo, uh, R1600 Turbo in eighth position there. A little bit wide for NZ just coming out of that right hand. It shouldn't compromise his run too much as they come in towards the chicane. He's just have to keep an eye on that, not try and overdrive it, overdo it and uh, go past that limit because it's going to really put him on the back foot and potentially leave himself open to attack here. Yeah, and of course, I mean, I know that we do keep coming back to tyres, but it's just because of how much of an important part of this race they're going to be. Um, like, like I was saying before, with no reference point in front of him, no idea on quite the pace that the guys have got behind him, whether they're pushing that hard or not. He's just got to get his foot down and just crack on. Um, obviously, he's got the pace to do it. I mean, he's put it on pole at the end of the day. He's in the number one machine. He's in first, so... You know, he's got all the credentials there to show why he's got the uh, the potential to win this race. But NZ, it's, he's a bit back and forth for me at the moment because he keeps closing up and then dropping off again. So it's um, it's probably getting into the head of Kyle Lamb a little bit because he's thinking, well, have you got the pace or not? Are you going to get it done? Like? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, uh, well, Kyle Lamb at the moment, he's just driving his own race and trying to keep a cool and calm head. But uh, that's not going to be easy to do so, as you say, when you've got that a lack of either constant pressure from behind or uh, when you do have that pressure from behind uh, it's not very frequent so let's keep an eye out and see how things will go there is NZ in second position running on board here with Slicey Cyrus coming up towards the Flugplatz then for the second and a third time over the brow of the hill you can see just getting a little bit airborne as they uh, flick it into the right kink there in sixth gear partial throttle through there then back on the loud pedal once again a great run that Slicey Cyrus has gotten through that corner and he's now all over the back of the Canadian as they come up the hill and ready to flick it right very quickly in just a couple of moments time it's a very quick left-handed kink as you come over the hill once again slightly on the brakes through there NZ oh. is out a little bit wide he's off onto the grass and he's in the barrier here as well so NZ makes a mistake that allows Slighty Cyrus to come through does he get the stops on the grass he just about does that was very very lucky indeed there but it does allow Slighty Cyrus and also Cards fan to go through into third position that was Really nice car controller by NZ, to be fair. He could have let off the brakes. He could have really tried to still make the corner. We have a replay here then. I was just about to say that as they go over the crest, it can be a nightmare because, look, you're turning in. The grip's going away from you. Oh, the back end just gets out, and then that's it. The car loses all sort of lateral momentum. But fair play on him for getting it stopped in time. That was really nicely done, and he keeps it out of the way of Cards fan as well, who just goes around the outside nice and casually. But, you know, that's just how easily you can make a mistake, and the race can change here. Yeah, straight to the scene of the accident there for NZ. Not really much he could do, and now he is in a different position in this race. And instead of attacking for the race lead, he is attacking to try and fight his way back through. But what is he going to do here? What is his strategy going to be? Is he going to try and close up that gap and get past Cards fan and Slighty Cyrus as quick as he can? Or is he going to hold back in the hope that they decide to go into the pits at the end of lap two? I don't think he can risk not pitting now. Um, I think after a moment like that, it's going to kill your tyres off completely. Um, some of the guys we've seen struggling where they've had a really clean race driven smoothly through the whole thing something like that is just going to absolutely murder the tyres so he's just got to do a bit of damage limitation now I think um, he's going to he, well it's, it's pretty inevitable he's going to pit at the end of this lap and then it's just damage limitation from there like I say he's going to want to fight for a podium because uh, I think that's all he's going to be able to salvage at this point but the pace that Carl Lamb's got I'm going to probably tip him to win this at the moment unless somebody stays out and overtakes these three in the pits yeah, it wouldn't be the first time we have seen that either, of course. If uh, Carl Lamb does decide to pin, he should have newer tyres at the end of this one, but remains to be seen what his strategy call is going to be. Coming in towards the midpoint then of lap two here, and you can see NZ there really beginning to uh, struggle now, but Cards fan likewise, his pace 
isn't particularly brilliant out there on track. It's not quite as good as uh, Slicey Cyrus is and also Carlam. The advantage here for Slicey Cyrus is that he's been able to increase the advantage over Cards Fan now. So that's going to be even Ooh. more of a headache. But he's in the wall out of the uh, left hander there. That allows NZ to come through. So Christmas come early for NZ. And a mistake there from the American sends him into the wall on the outer side of the track. Let's piece together here, Chaz, to see exactly what happened. Might have just gone a bit deep on the brakes, you know, he's turning in. Always oh, clipped the white line on the right. Yeah, he just, just turns it in too hard on the brakes, to be honest. Car just understeers wide and goes in. I was going to say he might have clipped the grass and then, you know, the car got out of shape, but nothing uh, nothing too untoward there, really. Just a little bit late on the brakes, maybe a bit too much lock, and that was that. Yeah, too much load on the front tyres, and, well, they can only handle so much braking power and also turning capability at the same time. And yeah. at that point, they said, no, thank you, and, uh, well, sent it straight into the wall on the outer side of the track. Here's another replay of something else that's happened. It's the same replay we we're just going to have a look at, so we cut away from that. Uh, but Cards fan there, very impressive uh, to see him now back on to NZ already here so far. You can see Turismo Cooper there, the American driver in the background, just 2.2 seconds away from these guys as things stand at the moment. So just keep an eye out on that and see if anything is uh, going to change, whether that gap is going to decrease or increase. Maybe Cooper has preserved his tyres a little bit better than the likes of Cards fan or NZ in front of him, but that might could prove to be a very beneficial thing for him at the end of this race. Now then, NZ, the man who is under pressure once more. Cards fan beginning to pile that pressure onto him as he tries to find his way through. See Slicey Cyrus there just in the forefront of his shot. Two seconds down the road is uh, Slicey Cyrus here. And uh, it's a case of if he's going to pit as well. If all these drivers are going to pit, it'll of course be a bit of a moot point and they'll all end up in exactly the same sort of situation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, however, that's not always this simple as that. No, definitely not. I'm, I'm just trying to look down the order a little bit and just determine who may really benefit from this. I mean, DCTR Burdock is 3.6 seconds behind the car in front. Mr. MCA and Turismo Cooper, they've both got a little bit of a gap in front that, you know, it's not enough for them to get the slipstream off the guys in front, and it's not enough for them to hold them up being in a train of cars. So, you know, someone like that may benefit from staying out because at the end of the day, they're not too far off the race leaders. They're probably, what, 10 seconds maybe? Maybe not even that, really. They're within 10 seconds. So you'd think that they'd have a really good lead come the end. It's just... Depends on how they've looked at after the tyres until this point, because despite some of them being on their own, they could still be overdriving the car, I suppose. Yeah, certainly it can be the case, can't it? Further back as well, uh, our 1600 turbos coming out a bit of pressure from uh, DNA Spec Miata for ninth and 10th position in this race there as well. Here is our 1600 turbo. Hasn't had the pace to keep with DCTR Burdock, who has cleared off out in front in this one. Here is DNA Spec Miata as well. In terms of their lap times last time around, actually Miata was a little bit slower uh, than our 1600 Turbo, but they've been relatively close in terms of the sectors on this lap, but a slide like that is not going to be helping Miata in terms of, one, his tyre life, and two, keeping that gap so much of the constant. Bit of uh, dust, I think, being kicked up in there in the forefront of his shot as they come through the fog, now through the mist here in the dusky night at the uh, Nordschleife, then through the right hander we go and over the crest of the hill and head it down uh, before we head in towards this final part of the lap, and it's absolutely brilliant this one, but DNA spent me also, well that gap was down to half a second, but it seems to be just building up ever so slightly now here as well, so clearly then a mistake from R1600 Turbo is what brought that gap down in the first place, and uh, DNA spent me also just doesn't seem to have too much of an answer for it at the moment, and going wide like that and missing apexes, it's not going to be helping him at all. No, he had a bit of a slide through the left-hander, and another one there as well, the back end of that car is not behaving for him at the moment. So he's, uh, it's just, just those little bits of momentum that you can wash off. You know, it all adds up, especially over a lap as long as this. Down the straight, though, he's, well, he's the not-so-straight, I should say. <laughs> he's actually really catching up there. He got some really good momentum. So R1600 Turbo must have made a mistake coming onto it. Lost a bit of his momentum. So it just shows how quickly it can shift from one way to the other. And um, we're going to have the guys now coming onto the dotting of her, and then pit stops any minute. So this has been the pivotal point in most regions so far that we've seen, Tom. What do you reckon we're going to see this time around? It's really difficult to say, isn't it, there? And uh, I'm, I'm just wondering, just wondering whether Carl M is going to do that because he's got a 4.4 second buffer. The risk he takes is, of course, that Slightly Cyrus ends it. If they don't pit, they're going to pass him on track quite easily. And then Carl Lamb has got the mother and father all tasked to try and close that gap down. Uh, at the closing stages of this race. The advantage is, of course, he'll have greater pace, but that doesn't always mean too much because we saw uh, in the European region uh, one of the drivers in the lead of the race not pitting. 
another driver further down the order who we didn't know was going to be a particular feature in this one did not pit he was able to emerge through and then he was able to fight for the race lead on the last lap of action so it all comes down to what the race leader does and whether anybody else follows suit now Carl Lamb he is getting ready to come through. Now he does he pit, does. so he does come into the pit lane then at the end of the second lap. What about Slicey Cyrus? Does he box? Yes, he does. NZ boxes as well, and also Cars fans. So the top four drivers opting to do the same strategy. So a bit of a moot point there because they all come into the pit lane. They're all going to emerge in the same area. The top six coming in. Is anybody further back going to take a risk and try and go through? I don't think they are. I think they're all just trying to follow themselves and uh, everyone doing exactly the same sort of thing at the moment. Yeah, just playing it safe, I suppose. Um, I think. Oh, is R1600 Turbo not pitted? I wonder. Yeah, no, he hasn't pitted there, R1600 Turbo. So he has come out of this one. But where has he come out in comparison to the rest of the field? He's down in fifth position, I think, just behind Cards fan here. Going through to that first corner. Yeah, he is indeed. Uh, but he's not pitted, but he's still two and a half seconds back. And now he's, of course, not got fresh rubber. So I don't think that's going to be something that's going to work out particularly well because the likes of Turismo Cooper, Mr. MCTA, uh, MCA rather, sorry, DCTR Burdog, have all pitted behind, so three drivers who are going to be attacking, and they're only one and a half seconds down with 25.3 kilometres to go. It's surely going to be a matter of time before those three drivers are right all over him uh, and trying to find their way through, or the two drivers, I should say, Turismo Cooper and DCTR Burdock. Um, uh, sorry, Turismo Cooper and Mr. MCA uh, will be close to him, but DCTR Burdock are further four as a point seven seconds back, so he's got a bit more of a task to build up. Yeah, it's going to be hard work for some of them to, uh, to hold on to this, really. I mean, Carl Lamb was in a really, really good position there. Either way, if he didn't pit, he was going to be in a win-win scenario. Because um, if he doesn't pit and the guys behind don't, he's still got his uh, he's still got his lead, and they're all on similar rubber at the end of the day. If he doesn't pit and the other guys do, then you know they're really, really far behind, and he's still got the lead with an extra advantage on top. So I think he's uh, he's controlled this well at the moment. I mean, pitting just gives him that confidence to push the car, I suppose, on the last lap. He doesn't have to worry about getting around two laps now. Doesn't have to worry about doing 50 kilometres. It's only got to be two, hasn't it? <laughs> Not two. 25. It's twice. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you know he, he can push a bit more on that last lap. We may see a fastest lap. We may see uh, you know personal best in those sectors. But also the guys behind now, of course, that we're looking at here, Cards Fan, NZ, and Slicey Cyrus, they're all going to have that same little confidence boost in the rubber that they can push and really have a battle now. So hopefully this uh, heats up a little bit between Slicey Cyrus and NZ through the left hand and then we go on towards the uh, the northern loop the Nordschleifer circuit there is Cards fan just getting a little bit squirrely in uh, fourth position the Subaru STI replica livery on this uh, GR Supra it's a very unique looking machine that is for sure but a penalty there in the background for Turismo Cooper as well one and a half seconds is what the American has for one reason or another presumably that's either exceeding track limits or contact with another driver either way disappointment there for uh, Cards fan he'll be ruining those mistakes and, uh, sorry, Cards fan, I should say, Turismo Cooper will be ruining those there mistakes. Cards fan, meanwhile, is going to be trying to pile the pressure onto NZ, but of course, all these drivers now on new rubber. It's a case of if one has got the pace advantage over the other. What about NZ here? We know how quick he was in the early stages of this one. He was able to run in second place, then made that mistake into the barrier on lap two. And now he is trying to find his way back through Slighty Cyrus as they come in towards the footplatz then for the final time of asking here. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I'm, I'm still wondering how they're going to approach this last lap, really. I mean, you just got to push, haven't you? Let's face it. It's the only thing NZ needs to do right now. And he's just make sure he's in the slipstream coming on to dot, uh, dotting a her. I think, at the end, if he can just keep the pressure on, maybe get Slighty Cyrus to wear out his tyres a little bit more, maybe. He's, uh, he's going to be in a very beneficial situation if he can just get the slipstream, get the job done. But, you know, it can very easily switch. There's a couple of corners after that. Wow, they're both a bit deep into there, to be fair. Nice little sort of synchronised slide through the, uh, the right-hander. Back down the hill they go. But what I was going to say is there's a couple of corners, of course, before the final straight after the dotting of her. So it can all, uh, it can all change. Even if you've got the move done down the straight, the other guy can jump in, maybe get a bit of a cut back, maybe go back down the inside and, you know, undo all that hard work so be interesting to see whether uh, whether he plays it that way Slighty Cyrus really sideways through there so NZ is putting the pressure on now and those tyres have been worn down well the advantage is that Slighty Cyrus doesn't have to worry too much about tyre wear here on this final lap because of course they're only doing one lap on the uh, sports hard compound however uh, if NZ is just able to preserve his tyres a little bit more he will have still of course a little bit more grip to play with and that could be just enough of an advantage 
for him to uh, continue on there in third position and try and challenge for second place. So, as you said, I think this one is wrapped up by Carl Lamb as things stand. We're not at the halfway stage in this lap, however, so let's not count our chickens just yet. About six and a half seconds, the advantage he has got is looking pretty untouchable there so far. But NZ beginning to really pile the pressure on. Further back, of course, you can see the gaps are very pronounced, actually, between other drivers there as well. Around about a second to three seconds for some of these as the uh, gap, as we say, has just been increased. And again, a bit of a slide there for Slighty Cyrus. He looks like he's just on the bit of a, the back foot here, Chaz, at the moment. Yeah, it seems a bit under pressure from having to defend. Um, should call him Slidey Cyrus at the moment because he's really, really all over the place. Um, NZ's probably just driving along laughing his head off at this because he's thinking, wow, look at this guy, what's he doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm making this look easy. So, yeah, um, he, at the end of the day, he's still got his podium, and as I was saying before, that's what he wanted to fight for. Of course, that mistake from Cards fan opened that up, but these guys are really gapping Cards fan at the moment as well, to be fair. So even though that they're trying to put pressure on each other and, you know, trying to get into each other's heads, Cards fan just can't stay with them once he's done that pit stop. No, certainly can't. You can see there... Slighty Cyrus in second position there is NZ then riding on board with him in uh, third place. So this is the closest battle easily on track at the moment. Everybody else, uh, they're at least a second away from one another, as we were saying. So because everybody else has pitted, the uh, gaps are just a little bit more pronounced. Apologies, actually, by the way, to Kuki Burp, who is uh, just half a second away, actually, from RC1600 Turbo. And that gap is coming down quite significantly. R1600, of course, having not pitted so far down in uh, eighth position. Uh, everybody else behind him has um, made a pit stop there, or Kuki Burby at least has made a pit stop. Mr. MCA and uh, Burdock as well have also managed to find their way through against him. Yeah, some of the guys that haven't pitted, though, they're going to really be struggling on these tyres now. I think Kuki Burby's going to get this done before the end of the race. I mean, it's just about a tenth of a second, so he must be literally pushing him along wherever they are at the moment. So uh, there's a bit of a, a bit of part of the circuit now where they're going to be getting a lot of the slipstream as well, so it's going to close up some of the battles a little bit. Uh, Kuki Baby's under a tenth of a second, as we say, but on board still with NZ, just chasing Slighty Cyrus now into the last couple of sectors. Now this is where it starts to get a bit more narrow here, Tom, after the carousel, and a bit more windy, so it's going to be a bit more focusing for these guys not to make any contact. Yeah, so much one time through the carousel, you can not even think about doing that. It's difficult enough to make it around the carousel uh, at the best of times. You can hear there the difference in surface as they come back on. Bit of a slip and a slide there for uh, Slighty Cyrus. Not the first time we've seen that over the course of this last lap here. And NZ, again, just keeping that gap at a constant, keeping that pressure on. And you can guarantee that it's the Dossinger Hill where he's probably thinking about his best opportunity to make that move. The thing is, it's so late in the lap that, that uh, well, you've kind of got to make it work. Otherwise, you're completely stuffed because there's no opportunity uh, throughout the rest of the lap to make a move. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's just going to... Uh, you've got to line it up. And the thing that some people don't think about is when there's a slipstream opportunity, if you're starting right behind the car that's in front of you, you're not going to get much of an overspeed, much of a slingshot, because you're not going to be behind them for very long. You're just going to end up pushing them. Then you're going to be sat at the same speed. So what he needs to do is really think about this. He's come back a little bit. Oh, he's very out of shape over the crest of the hill there. Nicely saved. So he's got to do a bit more work to make sure he closes back up. It's about half a second at the moment, about six tenths as well. It seems to fluctuate a little bit between that. But that's where he wants to be, really. About six tenths of a second behind, maybe, coming onto the straight, and then he's going to get a nice slingshot, bit of an overspeed, and past he'll go quite easily as well because I mean we all know how long that straight is it seems to last forever I mean in a, in a car like the uh, the GR Supra of course it's not the most powerful thing you can drive on Gran Turismo but still quick in a straight line all the same but it would take like uh, a, a good while to get up the straight I think so you've got a bit of time to think about what you're doing so then, NZ pressure really is on him now to try and deliver oh. a perform, but a slide like that is not going to be helping his charge. Coming in towards the Stefan Beloff S, we are then for the uh, last time of asking then here at the Nürburgring, and NZ is just looking a bit scrappy here. Where is Slighty Cyrus of Scrappy in the first part of the lap? NZ is just looking a little bit raggedy as he's trying to close that gap down. He's trying every trick in the book he can to bring that gap down to as minimal as possible before they come through into the uh, final series of corners. They're just about to come through into the second carousel, now and Slighty Cyrus has got a mirror full of Canadians uh, MZ Supra here so I reckon it's going to be a matter of time before he finds his way through surely it is yeah into this long right hand now this is going to be the key point he's flashing the lights a little bit at him just to have a quick look as they go around he's got four tenths of a second he needs to just get a good exit here make sure he's got the run and yeah I think he's at a good distance there to be honest maybe six tenths was a bit uh, a bit too far, but watch this gap come down now then. You've got four tenths of a second on the left-hand side of your screen. Slightly sour is there. You can see moving over as well to the uh, left-hand side of the track as he looks at it. And uh, 
just trying to break that tail away from NZ. NZ not too close in the first phase of the straight, but it's in the second phase where it really does come into its own. They come uphill and he begins to drop a little bit more speed. NZ then is going to have to go for the outside line against Slighty Cyrus. They're going to draw side by side with one another. Slighty Cyrus versus NZ for second position. He's now into second place, but who is going to break for the next left-hander? First, they don't break for it. They manage to hold on, and NZ is now through into P2. A brilliant bit of driving there for them as they come through into the final series of corners. Meanwhile, Carl Lamb is just about to come over the timing line here at the Nürburgring through the final series of corners we go and to the line for second position. Carl Lamb takes the chequered flag and he takes the victory here in the North America's region Super Cup race. But NZ does manage to hold off the charge. He gets ahead. He timed it to perfection against Slighty Star as he finishes in second position. And Carl's fan there over the line in P4 as well. Fifth position is going to go the way of DCTR Burdock. And then Mr. <laughs> MCA is going to finish over the line in sixth position here. Kooky Boom as well in a very uh, fitting livery. It's like a big yellow canary, that GR Supra. Um, going across the line here in eighth place, he did get past R1600 Turbo in the end. Of course, the older tyres would not have helped him out there. Still ninth place, though, inside the top ten. He'll be happy with that. DNA Spec Miata rounds out your top ten. But rather feisty race there, Tom. It was a, a, lot, of, uh, a lot of mind games getting into each other's heads and... Not too frantic in terms of battling, but yeah, really, really good race from these guys. That was uh, good fun. Yeah, absolutely right. Let's take a look, shall we, at the final results then of uh, that race here as the uh, Nordschleife. then, so Carl Lamb takes the victory, 7.8 seconds ahead of NZ. Slicey Cyrus there just loses out to the Canadian on the line. Cars fan in fourth, DCTR Burdock in fifth, Mr. MCA, Turismo Cooper, uh, Kuki Burby there in um, eighth position. Uh, just on the fringes of the uh, top 10, as you can see. Quite pronounced gaps, actually, between the rest of the field there. R1600 Turbo, well, he tried not pitting. It didn't pay off for him, sadly. He finishes down in ninth position ahead of Spec Miata. And then Q-Tip, Bloody Blue Boy, uh, the 359 straight race, GT Scuffs, and Calm down there in 16th position as well. A lap down from 13th position uh, onwards for these drivers, as you can see. Racing Swordsman in 17th, and then Crysak down in 18th position who sadly didn't take the uh, checkered flag three laps down as you can see there so in terms of the point standings then after 13 rounds of the toyota gr supra gt cup carl am sits at the top of the order gator daryl still in second position but i'm ibrahim gets himself ahead of turismo leicester and other drivers there quite a few making their way up the order yeah, it looks like turismo defson's taken quite a drop there as well and kev then um, Cards fans, of course, well, Cards fans gone up to 10th place there, actually, as well. Mr. MCA, he's also gone up. Kooky Bird makes it into the top 16 now as well. And NZ makes it onto the left-hand side of the board, of course, getting into the top eight. And it is very, very close between them. I mean, like you were saying at the top of the broadcast, Tom, a couple of hundred points may seem like quite a lot to some people, but based on what you get for these races, you know, it's uh, it's very, very close indeed. Yeah, hugely impressive stuff from uh, all of these drivers in the GR Supra GT Cup. So our focus does shift then over to the final of the GR Supra GT Cup in 2019. That will be taking place live and on location in Tokyo on the 26th of October 2019. We really hope you can join us there. From Chaz Draycott and from myself, Tom Brooks, thanks very much for joining us for this one, and we'll see you in Tokyo.